Welcome to another Save Your Books live restoration video here. And um, today we're working on part five of the Fairy Tales book. And we will see how far we get with this. But I'm planning to do the lining for the spine first. As you can see, it is not lined. It has the headbands on and, well, end bands, I guess. Actually, I'm feeling like the uh, corners are sticking out a little bit and what I like to do is just trim off the the corners of them just a little at an angle get them out of the way you don't want them sticking out over it's like you should be able to feel the edge and not catch on anything in the press. Make sure that the mole is really pulled through. Oh, I'll put the video camera down. That would be helpful. Let's see. How's that? That's not too close, is it? Good. All right, here we are. So I've got that. <clears throat> By the way, if any of you make any comments, I'm just going to have to look at them later because they can't do everything. <laughs> I need a team. That's what other people have. All right. Making sure the mole is pulled in. This is also a time when you might make sure it's not sticking out over the edges, but you can also do that later. Like here, there's a little thread just sticking out. <clears throat> All right, and then I'm using my fancy press, but uh, anything you can do to get the book so you can work on the back of it and have it be tight, fairly close to the top. That's what we need here. All right. And right now I'm checking the, the roundness of the spine. Um, to make sure that it's a good a good shape. And it's actually feeling it's like too slanted here and more round here. So I'm gonna adjust it a little bit before I do the lining. And that just means loosening it up a little. I'm just tapping it with this hammer called a backing hammer, but you can use anything, and frankly, pushing up from the bottom is also helpful to really shape it. And I loosened it a little too much. It was kind of rolling around. So now I've tightened it just a little bit. So it's still, you can see I can still move it. Anyway, that is feeling better, although I'm still, there's just one spot. Now I'm having trouble getting up underneath there. If I can raise up these bricks, that's better. Yes, a beautiful round is what we want. And then tighten it back up again. Now I'm getting a, a piece of paper that I have sitting around. This is the um, Dove Gray uh, Antique End Leaf Paper. And the paper I, I grabbed from my scrap pile, it happens to be like nearly square. Well, I'm going to come back up again. Da, da, da. Hello. Try this. Mm, higher. This thing's hard. All right, here we go. All right, so I've got this square piece of paper. And because I want the grain of the liner to go the same as the spine, I'm gonna have to figure out what the grain of this paper is. And I find that the fastest way to do that is to just spray one side. And it will curl immediately into where the grain is. And if you draw a line along 
kind of the spine of that. It's like if it were making itself into a book, that's the spine. This is now a fold of paper and now you have pages. So if you think about that as in relation to the book, you want that to be the same as the spine. So that's what we're gonna attach to the spine here. All right, so I, I did that Julia Child thing and I already cut them because cutting's boring. You know how to cut, right? There's cutting in earlier videos, so we can do that. All right, so now I'll go back down, you can see. All right, push this up here. Okay, and now you can see me gluing out the spine. Now, because I've got the mull already on here, this mull will kind of absorb a lot of glue. And that's, that's great in a way because more solidity to the spine and if I had just glued out the paper and stuck it down to this, I believe that it wouldn't adhere as well because all of these little holes in the mull wouldn't be filled in. And so it's like the paper would be just attaching to the top of the mull rather than really becoming one with the spine. And that's kind of a lot of glue, but not too much you can see. And always have something to wipe your hands off with nearby. All right. And I'm also going to glue this paper. You can also double check that the grain direction is correct because once I've glued it out, it immediately becomes the shape of the spine. And the first piece I'm doing goes in between the end bands. And it's nice to get it just, not really damp, but like just a little humidified. You want this first one to be fully attached before you would attach the second one. And I'm doing two liners on this because it's a rather wide spine. Um, for a thinner, smaller book, you would probably only do one liner. And in that case, you would go tip to tip. But in this case, we're doing two because it's, it's a little heftier book. Now the drying process for this is something that I'm kind of like, well, I don't really want to wait for that because I'm doing a video. Hi, Natalie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I see you're watching. All right. That's awesome. So I'm probably going to cheat and just put this one on top of this, even though you should totally wait for this to dry before you do that. And you could iron it or blow it dry or whatever. It's actually not that bad. It's, you know, it's not completely soaking wet. So that's fine. And this one, like I said, it's going to go tip to tip. <laughs> and so that's that. I'm just going to get that stuck on there. All right, and in this case, I didn't do the glue this and glue this. I guess that's an option, but I feel like that in this case would have created too much, too much glue. Same thing, you just kind of let the paper relax by getting this side damp. And then we can rub it down. And before I We'll move on completely. I'm definitely going to let this part dry while I work on a, another part of the book. I'm gonna work on the case next. But before I do that, we have to babysit it. You just have to. This is kind of crucial. It's like you're melding the two things into one. 
and the paper should never extend beyond the top of the shoulders of the book. Um, and if you do it a little less than that, it's not the end of the world, but you know, not ideal. Just should go to the top of the shoulders. Another thing, very handy, is to get wax paper. If the paper has become fragile with the dampness, you can protect it while you're rubbing it down by putting wax paper there. Keep in mind though that if I had done this to the first one and then tried to attach the second one, I've got wax all over it, which is something that specifically keeps things from sticking. So only after both of them are on and you're, you're kind of done because this will not be attached to the, um, the case spine. Oh, this fairy tales book. And actually this is, this is a good time to bring up that while, here, I'll come back up. We'll talk about it up here. Hello. Ugh, never tall enough. One more. There we go. All right. So, something to think about while you're doing the, the spine lining on the text block is you have to be thinking ahead to the case spine. What kind of label are you going to make for the case spine? And... I've been working on the label for this book for a while now, kind of on and off in a, in a strange way. Uh, so I'll show you what I've been working on. So as you know, the spine is gone. I had no spine for this book whatsoever. Typically for a reback, you would just stick the old spine back onto the new spine. Great, all done. This case, nothing. And so I could get out my quick print stamping machine and all my little um, you know, type and stamp the title right on the spine. That's certainly a possibility. But because I'm doing this for people who, you know, maybe don't have all the equipment, I wanted to show you a pretty simple way to just print up a, a label for the book. And um, I'm actually going to create a course for this on um, the Save Your Books website because I think, you know, I, I worked on this a long time over the many years and I've created a very simple system for just creating a paper label. And I'll show you, um, here's the, the end product. So this is um, some of the, well, it's one of the Japanese papers. It's a little thicker, maybe 30 GSM. And this will eventually get cut out and stuck onto the outs, you know, the spine of the book. So here's the cover and you can see they kind of go together Found a, found a pretty good font and all that. So, but I started out having it look like this. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I'm, you just center it and you put spaces in between each of the lines. And that way you can adjust how, how far away the words are from each other. And you just kind of work on this and work on this. And you, you're going to print up a lot of copies just to kind of hold it up to the book. See how it fits on the spine. You know, where are the, where are the actual lines for the edges. And you, you also want to make sure that you have an extra eighth of an inch on each edge. Because otherwise it's just too close. So you definitely want to be within within the spine for sure. So I started out with this and I was like, this is just way too big. It's, I think I was just kind of going with the, the cover kind of going, Oh, I'll kind of copy the cover onto the spine. I held it up to the book and I was like, that is gigantic. Forget it. So, um, but I did do a test one and it just, it was just too big. So I moved on and made a smaller version and that's what I wound up with. And this paper can actually just go through a printer. It's thick enough and stiff enough that it can do that. But if it, if you had some kind of colored paper or tissue or something that you wanted to go through that isn't, you just tape it at the leading edge and it'll just go right through. 
So do all the testing you need to do and figure that out. And the, one of the reasons I have to think about the label now is that there are different ways to do the spine. I could do a hollow, two on, two off hollow on the text spine, but instead I've just done two liners. And that's, that's fine. What it means is that when I put the case on, um, it is not going to attach to these liners. Um, what I'm going on about here is that there is a way to do an inset panel on the case spine so that when you attach it to a hollow, the, the, the new label is inset and smooth with the rest of the spine. I'm not doing that this time, but I want you to know that like this is the time you actually have to think about whether or not you're going to do that is when you're lining your spine. You have to think where are you going with the label. So just keep that in mind or the decoration, whatever you're going to be doing. Okay, back to this. This has had a chance to dry. This is handy. And let's see how it's going. Oh, yeah, that's way better. It's really important to let it let it set a bit and to rub it down again. Okay, just um, go down here again. There we go. So on the edges here, I had some sewing uh, threads going through the, the mull on coming out this way. And it's really important that you rub extra carefully along those threads because they tend to just kind of make the paper pop off. All right, and since this will not be attached to the case spine, you can Sign your name, write the date. What is the date? August, oh, I actually might use a pen. Hmm. Yes, August, I'm gonna say it's the 12th, I'm not sure. And I'm gonna write live on Facebook. Then I have to put save your books. Anyway, someday the next bookbinder will find us. Oh, all right, dot com. Then they'll know <laughs> it's my website. Somebody will find this and go, hey, what's this about? And then they'll actually be able to go look at the video about this. Isn't that crazy? So that's fun. All right, now I can set this aside for a bit and get back to the case. So I will just put this over here. Go. All right, so now what is going on with this? What we need to do is to create a new spine in here. And I can't remember, I think I talked about this in an earlier video, what we were going to use for the spine, what material. And I did I went through the whole color matching thing and found a good color on the muslin, if that's what we were going to do. And then I remembered I had this book cloth that was just pretty much perfect, and I decided to just go with that. This is very possibly Brillianta. I will look that up and make a note. I'm hearing thumping noises on my roof, and I don't know why. Okay, in any case, there you go. So, all right, while the book is drying, I'm going to have to take it out and use it for measuring. Which is not ideal. I like to just let it sit by itself and dry properly. Now this is what we got. So, put it in place 
And what I'm looking at here is the square, which is where the boards stick out from the text block. And if that's where you want it to be, and it's all even, that's kind of a key, even and covering up the paste down, then you can match this side to that. But more importantly, when you flip it over, and I haven't moved this, now I can see exactly what the joint is supposed to look like. That's what the joint wants to be. Now you could use a knitting needle for the, for the joint pressing, the pressing rod. That happens to fit really well. Um, or the um, bamboo skewers that come in the book repair kit. Or I happen to have these acrylic rods I bought a million years ago. I don't remember where I got them. Um, but whatever, you, whatever you're using, you just attach it to the end of a board because you're gonna want pressing boards. And that's what these are because after we've put the new spine material in here, we're gonna wanna press it. And the reason I'm going on about this is once again, you have to think ahead and what I'm looking for here, I'll show you, is I want to make sure that the pressing rod is not raising the board up. If this were huge, if the rod were huge, then this part wouldn't be flat on here. And so you'd only be pressing here and with this giant rod. And um, uh, you, may, you wanna make sure you don't have anything too sharp in there. For instance, there are other kinds of ways to do this. I have this other lipped board. That's a thing you can have made for you. And you can see in this case, I have this board here. And that's because if I just put this in like that, I'll show you what that looks like. It's, well, it doesn't show up really great. Anyway, it's too tall. And so if I put that under a lot of pressure, it would actually dig into the joint and could damage the joint, which is why you would wanna put a board in to soften that. You definitely want the pressing rod to not damage the joint. So whatever you have to do to make sure that does not press in hard, too hard. So that all said. All right, so we've got this. And I've got the boards, you know, approximately in place. Let's not go crazy at this minute to be too precise. But what I want is I want to get the approximate width. And so what I like to do is just take a piece of paper and tuck it in. Um, ideally, this is going to wind up being a little shy of close all the way in. This is opened about an inch. I want this to be in about um, three quarters of an inch instead. And then if you think about it, it's like it has, the paper would have to tuck in here to the joint and then go wrap around and then it would tuck into the joint again, but did it stay in the other side? Not really. Anyway, so that's why we're getting a, a rough cut. Um, and then you would go, okay, so it needs to be tucked, but it's also gonna go about there. So that's about right. Something like that. And usually I'll just tear where it goes. Then I would take it to the cloth that I have. And once again, you can think about grain direction. Um, when it comes off of a roll, you have a roll of cloth. Now this is tricky because if you buy, if you buy a roll, it might not be rolled. Anyway, check the grain direction. <laughs> and once again, the way to do that, you can spray it on one side and it will relax and then it'll curl up. And I did that and I determined the grain direction and I actually drew a little squiggly line. 
to show that that's how it goes. Okay. And then I cut a piece that was that width. And now I'm going to cut the, I'm going to trim it wider than I need because you can see that the exact height you need for this piece is exactly where the turn in comes to. So I could do that and then I could do that and go, it needs to be exactly there. But what's nicer, be nice to yourself, make it easier is to let it be a little wider and trim it after it's attached to the board. So now I've got a piece that is definitely um, taller than I need and it might be it might be a little wider um, and I'm going to check that out now. So there are some niceties that could be done right now and one of them is I could sand the edge of this so that when it's tucked in it doesn't have quite the same line right here because whatever I tuck in here it's going to show um, and in this case this is you know a, sim a simpler way to do a cloth binding I just lifted the cloth and I didn't dig into the board or try and lift the board which is one way to make the edge of the cloth not show but we're not fussed about that this is not a very expensive book and it's just for me and that's what we're doing so and it won't look bad it'll be pretty darn good so we're going to do that and there are several ways to attach the cloth to the boards one way is to um, get the book exactly where it needs to be and then clamp it and then you can attach to both sides at once and that's that's an okay way totally totally fine absolutely one way to do it but it's kind of it's what once again it's like it's nice to have an out or like a check us out one thing at a time when you're not so sure what you're doing it's nice to give yourself some um, time uh, opportunities to check and make sure everything's going well so I'm gonna do this this other way which is to glue one side and I actually like to do the front although you can do the back especially if you're worried about you know any of the um, glue reacting with anything but in this case all I'm doing is gluing the two edges and it doesn't matter if I go a little, a little higher see just a little bit there a little bit there And then I'm going to place this where I want it. That's why I do the front is because I, it's really a chance to make sure everything is exactly, you know, kind of squared up how I want it on this side. And then let's get some wax paper. Actually don't want to glue this flap down yet it's one of my outs in case anything goes wrong I can fix it so I'm just gonna take this board like this and I may as well do another protective piece of wax paper And this is, if you don't have a, you know, fancy squishing press like I do over here, that one, if you don't have anything like that, at this point, you could just press like this. You don't have to have a fancy press. But I do have one. I'm going to just nip it for a minute. how many pounds of pressure that does on that but it's it uh, really just you know gets it down and flat pretty handy hmm. 
And when you pull out the wax paper, you're definitely gonna have some squeeze out. Make sure you either throw it away or in this case, it wasn't much, I just wiped it off. And you can see what we've got here. So far, so good. All right, now back, back down here. So now, now what I want to do is a, um, I want to do a dry press, a dry pressing with the pressing rods in place because that'll show me the shape that I want to work with. Just putting that there in case. Now, see, I could do this one at a time and just get the pressing rod exactly where I want it. And the book, the shoulder going over it into the joint, perfect. And then this has no glue, so I don't have to worry about wax paper or anything. But I can roll this up and then I can get my other pressing rod. Or even before I do that, I can just go, hey, look, here's the shoulder where this is going. Now, if the material you're using is really fragile, you cannot just press down in it like this. This is this um, lined foot cloth and so it kind of doesn't mind that. And that's gonna give me a good sense of where, where things are going, but even better is to do this pressing. And I'm actually gonna put this in the nipping press. Oops, you can see how the rod was kind of rolling off of in front of the board. I think I'm gonna use a little more tape and encourage it to stay on the, on the front. Okay. You have to tuck the tape in pretty good because otherwise it'll um, make it be a wider area there, which you don't want. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna nip that again. one of these you have to make sure that wherever you want the pressure to be is specifically over the area of the book that you're working on so I'm I, I put this basically on the spine area so centered on that and um, one other thing you could do to help that to really set in place uh, would be you could um, use a mister, put some water on it. But that's that's optional and there are things that can go wrong with that because the book cloth is, this book cloth I'm using is paper lined and they can separate when they're damp. So you don't want to go there. All right. Okay, back down. There we go. All right, 
So what we've got here, now that I can see more where this is going. Oh, and don't forget there's going to be a liner in here. So keep that in mind when you're also doing this. You could put that the liner in dry and not not attached yet. In any case, what I'm getting the sense of is that unless I want to open this up further, this is too close to the edge. I definitely want to remove at least one more eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths. And so this is why it's nice to do the, the kind of dry run or the, what am I calling this? The Attaching it one at a time is nice because now I can trim this really precisely to where it needs to be. Okay. And it's also it's also a little crooked, so got my 320 grit, which is actually fine for this, but the 100 might is a better cutting tool. This is going to be a great beveler, the 320. That's, that doesn't need that anymore because it's dry. You may have noticed that I'm not, I haven't been checking um, whether the book is upside down. That is coming. Oh, hi, Sharif. <laughs> I see you from Alexandria. Amazing. All right. Checking to see if your book is upside down. Pretty darn crucial. Since I thought of it, I'm just going to make a note on the book, which side is front and back, so I won't be confused. Where are my pencils? Oh my goodness. Hmm. All right, here's a pencil. So this is the front, front, and that means that this is the head, and I usually just put an X at the head of the book. That's just gonna help me keep oriented while I'm working on this. For instance, right now, that would be upside down. So, don't do that. And I know we're not there yet. We're not a we're not casing in. All right. So now Now we've got this. This is actually a nice a nice way. Once again, this is the way to do the attachment of the spine if you aren't super sure it's going to go well and you want to have an out. So there we go. So now what I've done is I've just, I've put it on, well, I'll show you. I got it all set and I'm like, I'm just putting it in place down here, putting the book in place. Um, instead of putting the spine liner here to save space for it, another way to save that space that you, you need for that liner is to just add a, a, a fence or a hinge. Uh, that can be anything. Let's see. Oh, just grabbing some Bristol board and frankly just sticking it in here somewhere hmm. 
don't really go in all the way. Yeah, come back. And where, there it is. That's going to leave that extra room that I need. Remember, I'm not casing in right now. I'm just attaching, attaching these things. So, another thing is we want it to be square. So I'm going to make sure I have a nice thick straight edge to line the boards up after I get it attached. It's a double checking method. So that's for after I get it attached. And meanwhile, I'm just making sure this is approximately square, correct. As I said, once I've got this attached, I'm gonna do a double check with the straight edge. This, it's pretty handy if you have methyl cellulose um, to extend the slip time. If you don't, you can also use paste. I'm just double checking that the hinge looks, or the joint looks straight and approximately the same all along. And now, just doing that board, just like the front that I did. A little bit on that. A little bit on this. All right. Go ahead and yeah. tuck that in. And then just kind of make that space there. Another way to do that is to do that real quick. Make sure it's feeling tight, that there's not a lot of bagging or slack there. Then I can open it up and just believe me, it's like when this was made, all of this was square. So you have an opportunity here to just check, does this line up flat with that? And the same here. It's looking very precise, so that's excellent. Believe me, sometimes I've done this and it's been really wonky, so this, this double checking method is very nice, very handy to do. Now we're at a good position where we can actually check and make a mark, and then we can trim off these, um, the head and tail, the height, to the exact place that we want it to be. And I'm going to use the um, sander. You could use a straight edge, whatever, whatever works. Huh. Yeah. One of the benefits of sanding is that you've also, you also get a bevel. Sorry, that was off camera. I was just doing this on the thing. Oh, I can bring it over. Let's see. I've just got these metal boards that I use to make these cuts. You don't have to have fancy metal boards. You could use cardboard um, or, or any board, but whatever you use will get dulled down eventually. do that it'll be very precise. All right. Coming along now starting to look like a real book. Um, another reason to do that um, part where I'm just attaching this here is that now if I wanted to do any color touch up to the edges of this cloth now is a good time to do it because once I've glued this, the, the color's kind of stuck. You can't get new color in there. You could put acrylics over it, but 
meanwhile, I, I have this one little pen I want to bring out. Let me just grab that. Okay. That's, you know, not sure how archival this is, but hmm, this is the kind of thing that I actually don't recommend for many, many, many books. Um, and let's find out why. <laughs> because putting ink on the edge of something, the ink draws into the cover possibly further than you want it to. Right now I'm just getting it on the very edge, which is kind of why I'm deluding myself that this is just fine. I'm licking my thumb and smearing it around cleaning it off my thumb. I don't know why I think licking it's better. Sometimes it is though. But just that very edge. Now see, if you're doing this on a fancy book and it's actually worth money or it's a client's book and you're really concerned about it, you would definitely want to test this out and see if this is a good idea before you went ahead and just did this like this. because it, it can be really obvious and look horrible. <laughs> but I know, I know my materials, I know my tools, and so I just, I happen to know that with this particular book cloth and with this particular, our distressed marker, that it just gets the very edge and um, wouldn't soak into this. So it did, it worked out better. Now the edge is less white. And so I'm going to be able to put that down and there won't be a white line there, at least not as much. So that'll be nice uh, when we get to that point. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we do need a liner. And if I had been doing that um, label that I was talking about with the, um, I'm calling it a stable label. So it's like you've got a hollow on the text spine and on this spine, you would actually have two pieces of liner and leave space for the label because then you can rub it in and the label just sets inside, just an inset panel. But meanwhile, we don't need that. So where'd my book go? Here it is. Great. Don't need that anymore. So the spine liner here is the exact width of this and the height of the boards. And so that's what I'm going to measure now. In this case, I'm, I've decided to use a, a pretty thick spine liner. This is an Arches, I believe. Um, sometimes I use a really thin bit of paper. It just depends on the, the situation. I'm trying to think why. Why does it depend? It depends um, because sometimes you you want to mimic the old-fashioned um, floppiness of the original spine. Whereas in this case, I'm like, yeah, I want a I want a pretty stiff spine. So thinking ahead, that's what I've come up with. All right, a robust spine. Now this really does have a thickness, and so I am going to sand the edge, the edges, um, this edge and this edge. I don't need to sand those edges in this case. Uh, once again, I'm off camera. This camera thing, maybe I can just scoot over. Not really, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring it over here so you can see what I'm doing, because that's nicer. All right. Yeah, just beveling the edge. And same on the other side. So I'm not cutting any, I'm not. I'm
going to get this case done. It's so exciting. All right. I'm just doing generally in here. I don't actually want to get glue on the hinge joint area, so I'm just doing a little bit on the middle. There we go. Okay, whatever you do, you definitely don't want to have this be taller than the boards. And it might even be good to check after you've put it on to make sure that that is not happening because you don't want it to drag. That's even with the boards, for sure. Oh, hi, Alan. Nice to see you. Boy, it's great, great having people here. All right. Okay. Now this, yeah, that's, that's going to be fine. Sometimes I, I will... I just knock the ears off of everything. That's what David taught me. Knock the ears off. Nobody likes a square edge. It just can make it easier to tuck things in. This is actually a great opportunity if your boards are really floppy you can see that. So this is just really falling apart here. And it's like, this is my opportunity to stick some glue in there or some paste. And, but once you decide you're going to do that, you kind of have to go for it and really do it because otherwise you're going to leave this half, uh, what's the word? It's like you get the very edge of it done, but it's not done there and it leaves a weak spot. So you have to do the whole, have to go for the whole thing. And this, this side needs it too. You guys have no idea how much dread I have doing this. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to put this together and it's not going to fit or it's going to be crooked. <laughs> Just the doubts, the doubts inherent in, you know, doing any book repair. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty shocking how we never really feel confident. All right, a little more glue. Turn that up and over. If this were a leather book, we might put a little string in there if we were doing something other than leather, um, Japanese tissue, to create a, uh, end, a head cap, rather, or an end cap. So, definitely want this to be straight across. And if I can pull this area in just just a hair, so it doesn't drag on, you know, if it's ever being moved across a table, then that's, that's cool. But you don't want it to be an obvious thing, and you definitely want it to be straight. Straight is good. All right, that's looking good. I don't think you can see that well. I'm gonna go flip this over. All right, oh, back to, back to the other side. If this were a Julia Child demonstration, I would already have this done, but I don't. Sorry. <laughs> I was just hearing about that. Is it Swedish train? Slow, slow TV thing? I was like, yeah, bookbinding, book repair. Let's do slow TV. Watching paint dry. Adding glue. 
You'll notice I'm I'm peeling the layers back further than they were because you really want to make sure you're getting it all the way in there. And you don't have to do every one because the the glue will penetrate and get through to the other layers. And once again, for, for fancier books, I, I would take more care with certain aspects of this. Um, there's a lot more waiting time and letting things dry before moving on to the next thing. But this isn't bad. This isn't bad for this little fairy tales book. Okay, and you can see these are just awkward turn-in pieces that will get glued back down eventually. There we go, okay. All right, and we are actually at the point where I like to let the book sit and think about it for a while. It's kind of how I put it. So, oops, yes, once again, front, Good habit. Check that it's right side up. So I'm just putting the wax paper in here to keep any moisture from the turn-ins from getting on the book. And I actually think this is going to be a, a good place to stop. It's been an hour. I wish, I wish it were faster and we were done, but that is not the case. And we do want this to get situated and really, it just makes it easier to put the book together later when it already knows where it's gonna go. You're telling it where it's gonna go and then you just let it mull it over. It's like, it's like it's a Capricorn or an introvert. Who are these people I know that just need a little extra time to think about things? Uh, all right, there we go. It's in place with the pressing rods in and the back is tight. I can feel it's tight. It's Everything's protected because I have the wax paper in there. And it doesn't need to be in the fancy you know, nipping press, it can just be under some weights. And that needs to set for well, a few hours to just really make sure it's gonna be in the exact right place. And once again, it's like you could do it faster, but here, I'll come back up here. Hello. Hey, so yeah, that's it for today. There's gonna be one more. I think we're gonna be done next time though, for sure. That's gonna be casing in and putting the label on. And I might make a Mylar cover for it because that's nice too. All right, thanks for watching.